Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Neo Geo Pocket Color game, and that happens to be Fazly, or Fazly, or something, I don't know, I couldn't figure out how this one is pronounced, but you're looking at the title. Now before we talk about like who developed this game and so and so, I have to mention the release order first, because not only is it really interesting, but it's also unlike anything I've ever seen. So in Japan, it came out in the year 1999. And as for the European release, it came out in the year 2000, but here's the screwed up thing, is that it came out about a few weeks before the discontinuation of the Neo Geo Pocket Color. So the game not only had a small print run, but it wasn't on store shelves for very long. But as for the North American copies, this is where things get really confusing. So apparently what happened is that the North American copies were made, but they were not released. But after the system was being discontinued in North America and PAL, but in Japan, the system was still doing fairly well enough at the time. So what they ended up doing was using all the unsold and recalled consoles from North America and PAL and uh, reselling them over in Japan. But the US cartridges were only a cart only with no box or manual that were packaged in with some of those recalled uh, systems. So yes, the copies that were intended to be sold in North America ended up being sold in Japan. And it even has the ESRB rating system on the cartridge, so yeah, it's pretty interesting, but also one of the most weirdest releases I've ever seen. So that takes care of that. Now, it was published by SNK, and it was developed by Sacknoth. Yes, that's right, the Shadow Hearts team. And it happens to be a tactical RPG with mechs. So a mecha RPG that's made by the same people that made some of my all-time favorite RPGs ever? Well, holy shit. Well, that has the idea to being one of the most greatest ideas. Okay, actually, before I continue that, I have to stop myself because it seems like lately, whenever I review something and I say that before I talk about the game, the game either ends up being mediocre or fucking shit. So how about we try not to think about that too much and just take it for what it is. So now let's finally start talking about the game's story. So it all takes place in the year 2099 after the Third World War. And it all takes place in the country of Ishtar, which no, it has nothing to do with the David Hasselhoff movie. So the name of this game is actually the name of a mercenary group, and the main character is named Sho. And he lost his father during the war, but the commander of the mercenary group is the one that ends up looking after him. And he grows up to becoming a mecha pilot while trying to restore peace to Ishtar. But there are two childhood friends of the show that happen to be Rico and Dorothy, and they are also mecha pilots. And then you have two supporting cast, which happen to be Hummer and Agnes, and the commander that takes care of show is Johnny. So that takes care of all the main characters. But with the big third war being over, of course there is still a civil war happening. So Prince Kane, his father, was assassinated and he ends up wanting to seek help from the mercenaries. And that's basically what you need to know. The story is nothing really crazy unique, but I do feel that the characters are pretty well written enough. So now, let's talk about the game's gameplay, and I figured I'd cover the battle system first. So it's a tactical RPG that is grid-based, but it doesn't play like a typical one like you would expect. So Sho is the only one that you get to control directly. Whenever you have other uh, allies, they are controlled by AI. So the way you move around in this is not by selecting things and picking them where you need to go. Instead, you put out the commands that you want to do, whether it be move up, down, left, right, or attack, defend, all that kind of stuff. So depending on the mech you have, you can import a certain amount of actions, and once you end your turn, it'll play out those actions in real time. So it's kind of a half and half of a turn base and a real time strategy. The only other game I can think of that kind of has an idea like that is the Girl Answer series, but even that's pretty different. So in this one, you want to try and predict on where you think your enemy is going to be at. So the battles are very different in how they work, and they do take a little bit of time to get used to, at least when you go into this blindly, but you do get used to it fairly quickly. But then whenever a battle is over, you can see a cutscene, and then it takes you to the main base, which is called Orchid. So you have a couple different options, you can go to the shop where you can buy and sell different equipment, items, ammo, and all that stuff. And then there's Dock, which allows you to customize your mech. 
Now let's go over that. So you get to customize your mech where you get to change the color of it or change the one that you want to use. And you can change the equipment, whether it be the actual weapons that you hold in each hand or the ones that are mounted onto your shoulders. And there are two other ones that are very important, and that being a backpack and a CPU. So the backpack allows you to take items with you into battle, whether it be healing items or ammunition that belong to the weapons that you equipped. And I have to mention this, but you always have to restock your backpack with ammunition after a battle. Because if you don't, then you'll run out of ammo within the middle of the mission, leaving you fucked. So it's always best to buy a ton of ammo on the weapons that you prefer to use. So there is a little bit of item inventory management you gotta do in this game, but it's nothing crazy compared to many other games that I've played. And as for the CPU, this is where you get to equip chips. And the chips are the actions that you get to do. Such as walking in different directions, the number of different attacks for each of your weapons. But reason this is important is that there's many other chips that you can buy later on, such as the weight, the dash move, or even the heat, which doubles your damage. So this game does have quite a bit of customization to get to do, so that takes care of that, and as for CMD, that's where you get to progress through the main story, and Task allows you to do side missions, mostly being on maps that you've already completed, and the rest of the options are pretty self-explanatory with status, library, versus for two players, and even save your game. So that takes care of all the menu management you get to do in this game, so now let's start moving on and talk about the game's graphics. And for Neo Geo Pocket Color standards, they look amazing. Hell, this might actually be one of the nicest looking ones that I've seen. So all the character art in the game just looks really great and has a lot of good detail to it. Also, the mech designs in this game look really nice too when you're looking at them in the store. Oh, and by the way, the mechs in this game are called Toy Soldiers. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that, but either way, despite the dumb name, they actually do look really cool. And the game's maps do look pretty good, although some of them do look kinda samey with its like brown and grey, but I do feel that it does fit the game really well, considering this game does take place in the Middle East. But other than that one minor thing, this game just looks really great and really impressive for the time. So now, as for the game's music, the music is pretty good, nothing too crazy memorable, but I do think it is pretty good for what the game is, it fits the game. Also, one weird thing that this game has that is kind of impressive for Neo Geo Pocket Color is that the intro song actually has lyrics in it. I'll show you a sample of it. Yeah, obviously the sound quality of it is not that great, but the fact that they managed to like fit it on here though is kind of impressive. But as for the OSD overall, it is pretty good, just nothing crazy memorable. Like, I wouldn't say it's as good as Kudelka's OST, and of course, it's not nearly as good as Shadow Hearts, but that's okay though. I do think it does fit well with the game, and that's really what's important. So now, if you wanted to go out and buy a copy of this game, be prepared to take out that kidney of yours. No matter which version you get, the game is pretty expensive. Of course, the Japanese one is the cheapest one, but of course, it won't be in English, and like I said, it's still kind of a lot. But the one in the PAL region, though, is easily the most expensive one, given that it was only available for a very short, limited time. I did manage to find one copy of the PAL version, and that happened to go for $315. And I only found one US English version that was going for $140. So if you do want to get this one just for playing it, you might as well just get the emulator at that point. Because as much as I do love the company Sacknoff and the work that they've done on their RPGs, unfortunately, it's not worth it for that. So now, as for my overall thoughts on this game, is that this game is actually pretty good. And personally, I have to say, I actually did like this game better than Kudelka, at least in terms of gameplay. Because the story in this game is pretty good, but nothing too crazy, like it's very typical, but I found that it's more about the writing and the characters and some um, little moments later on in the game that did make up for it. And the game's combat might seem a little slow at first, but once you get used to it though, you can actually go through battles fairly quickly if you're good enough. Like for tactical RPGs, I personally prefer them to be like the grid base where you get to select the character and like move them wherever you want with an arrow. But for here, it may seem a little strange and a little slower paced, but for some reason though, I still actually really liked it. 
In fact, I'd say this is actually a pretty good uh, beginner-friendly tactical RPG once you get used to the way how it works. And this game is not too challenging either, except for the last few missions. Some of those ones are kind of a pain in the ass, but that's expected though. So if you haven't played many tactical RPGs before and you're not like particularly great at them, I'd say this one is at least worth a try. I'll say this, this game is much easier and a lot shorter, and I mean a lot shorter, than Front Mission 3, which is by the way, also a great mecha RPG in a tactical style. And in case you're wondering how short this game is, there's only 13 main missions. Depending how you play the game, you can pretty much beat this game in like 10 hours if you could. Which is another reason why I'd say that it's more beginner friendly, for that I can understand that a lot of tactical RPGs can be overwhelming for how long they can feel. So I can definitely recommend this to tactical RPG fans and mecha fans, and like I said, the ones that may not be super huge into the genre, I think it's at least worth a try. And is overall just a very solid tactical RPG. Obviously it's not the best, but I do think it is really good for what it tries to be. And that takes care of another Sacknoff game that unfortunately had a cruel fate outside of Japan. It really is a shame that this company never got the success that they deserve, because Kadelka, while it is a flawed game, I do think it does have its good parts, but unfortunately, it just didn't sell very well. And as for the Shadow Hearts series, well, obviously, it did do well enough to get its own sequels, mostly due to a cult status. But unfortunately, as great as those games were, they never got the success that I feel like that they truly deserve. And as for this game, well, over in Japan it sold well, but outside of it, it just had a lot of fucked up issues due to the fact that they recalled a bunch of Neo Geo Pocket Colors. So it's really just bad timing, and it sucks that they're not around anymore, but at least the games can still be playable. And that covers almost every Sacknoff game that were released by them. But, believe it or not, there's actually one game that I have yet to review by them, and that happens to be Dive Alert. And it was also released on the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and interesting enough, this actually has two versions. There's Dive Alert Becky's version, and Dive Alert Matt's version. So it's kind of like Pokemon, where they release two versions of the same game, but with minor differences. So maybe one day I'll have to take a look at that one, but I can safely say that as of right now, that all of the uh, games released by Sacknoff have at least been pretty positive. Yes, even Shadow Hearts 3 actually does have its good moments too. So let's end things here, so thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.